in the next lecture of networks or networking. Uh, the term network actually refers to the framework of the rules which exist within the system. Uh, some of those nodes point we call nodes or vertices, while all those links which connect the two nodes together, we call that edge okay, or the link. Uh, the, whenever we talk about transportation network, which may be uh, denote the permanent tracks such as road, rails and canals or the scheduled ones such as the uh, special public transportation system, special trains or the uh, airline that could be extended to the various parts or the types through which we can explain network or the transportation networking. So, what is basically network? So whenever we want to complete a single journey, so the starting point is called origin, while where we want to be is called destination. So the same distance is actually, or, or uh, the same trip is covered through a network. So how we are going to determine the network capacity, that is only possible such as to measure its speed, to measure its capacity, frequency, travel time, etc. Okay. Uh, this is very much important to understand the interaction of land use within the transportation. So, as you can see here, that specific graph, we have the five main indicators starting from the from the land use, which is directly connected with the accessibility. Accessibility is connected with the uh, transportation supply, while transportation supply is uh, is uh, connected with travel demand, which is directly linked with activities. In a simple word, if you want to understand that that graph, we would like to understand that how we can extend or or do all the or or plan for all the activities while uh, providing a a, a kind of a, a balanced transportation supply to tackle that travel demand. Uh, so land use and transportation interaction is quite dynamic process which involve different type of a uh, special or temporal uh, dimension such as the uh, that specific figure uh, actually uh, determine the correlation so that how we can uh, how we can target or short term mobility decisions uh, for the purpose to achieve the long term. OK, so the transportation supply is designed for a specific percentage of 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 the number of those people. So if the demand increases, what will uh, so there will be kind of a relation or uh, effectivity on the uh, supply. OK, so you need to understand that in that specific graph on the left side, we have the process and uh, proportional impact, which is directly connected with that. And then we have the reciprocal impact from where we actually get all those characteristics in the in the reverse process. OK, so there is a reciprocal and proportional impact between as you can see here between transportation supply and transportation demand. And again, we have the uh, proportional impact between land use and the accessibility. So the more land we we'll use, the more accessibility we will have. OK, but again, you you need to understand that we are trying to develop a balance between all those variables so that to generate or create that much activity for for like which we can provide the the balanced transportation system. So the short term mobility decision greatly influ, uh, influence on the uh, everyday activities like commuting, marketing type of activities, mode choice, mode route, trip choice and the network capacity. OK, so this is very much important to understand. Uh, for example, if we don't have the balance system between transportation supply and travel demand, so as a result, we will come up with the congestion and the 
right quality will also be influenced strongly due to the huge attraction of the of the crowd or uh, are in uh, terms of passenger okay so uh, for the uh, transportation system engineer we need to understand that increase in transportation supply will also increase accessibility and for more accessibility more land will be needed that specific graph now i uh, now i would like to take you to to the transportation networking so like what we basically want from transportation so we characterized its characteristic in terms of network which we call infrastructure and its services how it's operate okay so the formation of transportation network in the growth of any city where trans where uh, transportation nodes or links occurs uh that should be simultaneously determined while the economic opportunities also attract more population and which also need more in uh, uh investment in the uh, transportation infrastructure as well to extend that uh, transportation networking uh, in terms of infrastructure of course because look it's very much easy if we plan for like for the population of one 100 people and we get too many activities in that specific geographic area so our balance is almost somewhere at 100 but if each and every day we get almost 500 so we need more investment to extend our transportation infrastructure or either to increase the level or frequency of the transportation in order to to uh, provide the the balance system to the people. So today in that specific lecture, we will talk about network geography, which we will try to understand through, through the quality of networks. So they, how we can determine the quality or performance of any networks. So uh, in that specific slide, you can see here we have two examples. So in the uh, left hand side where we have only uh, four nodes while three links. Okay, so those circular is called basically nodes or vertices, while uh, the one which connect those two nodes together we call it age or linkages or links. Okay, so we need to understand that uh, we have a, a formula which is number of links divided by number of nodes. As you can see here in that specific example, we have four nodes. Okay, and we have three lengths so three divided by five we have uh, it's uh, equal to 0 0.75 so we have the measuring parameter if it's uh, if it's uh, uh, the uh, summation of number of lengths divided by number of nodes uh, is equal to one so we have good connectivity of that specific network but if it's less than one so we have the poor connectivity but if it's less than 0.5 so it is quite complex and complicated to use and according to our transportation planner. So the other alternative is suggested. As you can see here, we have here the uh, square type network where we have the uh, uh, four nodes while the number of lengths are six. So six divided by four is equal to 1.50. So which gave us quite good quality of the uh, interconnected of all those areas within that uh, geographic area. Uh, in this specific lecture, uh, those six uh, network geography, we will be uh, uh, we will try to uh, understand its uh, characteristic. Is you can see here, uh, sometime we have the uh, permanent links and sometime we have uh, the uh, scheduled type of a uh, services. But almost all those links or cities are are what we will uh, try to develop in the future through our understanding almost all those cities looks like those six basic network geography parameters so first of all we will try to understand the frame network as you can see here so first of all we will try to understand the, the to apply the uh, quality of uh, interconnections so we have links divided by nodes which is uh, is equal to eight uh, divided by five, which is uh, equal to 1.6. So the characteristic of that specific frame networking that it provide the maximum connectivity is you can see here 
all those nodes A, B, C, D and E, all of them are connected with each other. OK, so we have maximum connectivity within network and it's quite convenient to travel from C to A or C to B. But what will happen if we talk about the demerits? So uh, plus means merits while minus means demerit. Uh, so the uh, the one which is in the center, which we called E, will also get a very huge uh, concentration from all those modes. So, so we can call that system the centrally crowded, and it will. Uh, uh, if uh, if we build a city which look like a a uh, frame network, it will quite expensive and complex even to build as well. Next type we have uh, the one which we called uh, uh, high level of detour, or which we called. Uh, where we need basically less cost to even build, where we have those four modes. So the quality is below than average. Now we will talk about why. Why is that? So of course we need less cost to build that. More land will be uh, actually used, but we have very less connectivity. OK, for example, if we imagine a place between B and D, OK, so if the if someone is actually living in the in the quite middle one somewhere here or or like here, so for him it will be quite hard to get himself to A. So we have the high level of detour as well of the uh, section A to C and B to D as well. So for example, if someone would like to travel to A uh, from C, so he should come to the center. Okay, so we have the high travel cost as well. Uh, rather than to, to go from here to there directly. So he should go like that. OK. So which is sometimes hard to actually build. The next type is we call that hybrid type. OK, uh, in the hybrid type. So this is basically combination of of the of the uh, frame network as well as of the of the uh, which we call least cost to belt okay uh, we have the less cost of uses of the land uh, in terms of cost and um, the the cost function uh, in terms to build and operate for the uh, transportation services it will also be reduced uh, but only again we have one issue that all connection must pass through the center so again, we have the uh, transport centric network. Next part is called centralized network. So you can see here I already determined the quality of that specific uh, uh, interconnection. So we have more utilization of lands and uh, more networking opportunity we do have, and it's kind of a best option to to uh, provide the uh, transportation within that services within that city and we have again high frequency as well but the issue is again uh, it's a central based network so we will receive huge traffic in the main center and we don't have any direct connection for example if you would like to go from i to c or b to h so you should cross a so that's why we call it central jam based centralized network okay so of course okay so the quality is also below than one the next one we call that decentralized networks is you can see here we have more options to go okay so we have the high level of accessibility it uh, it will also distribute traffic quite effectively uh, as you can see here um, so uh, the the middle point which we called A in C, which exactly lies here. So those two nodes are under high pressure. So no central regulatory body. For example, if you uh, if you would like to provide the uh, transportation services within that city, if we have that uh, that many links and if we have multiple transportation operator, it's quite hard to bring all of them on a, a single table. Okay because of the uh, complexity of like that network. So we have different working and operating structure as well. Okay. 
uh, the last one we have the distribute or distributed network is you can see here the uh, quality if we would like to determine the number of lengths divided by number of nodes we have almost 12 lengths and we have seven nodes okay and it's uh, quality of interconnection is above one and it reaches 1.7 uh, so that specific network uh, get so many uh, advantages so like high connectivity of all nodes and we have multiple options for to complete our single journey from from like anywhere. So for example, if you would like to go from uh, F to J, so we have multiple options. OK, so you even don't need to come always to the center as well. So you can complete your journey without disturbing the specific chart i would just like to explain that how different components of transportation are directly or uh, indirectly connected with transportation uh, networks or uh, so like for example if we talk about uh, transportation time and frequency and uh, punctuality so all those important uh, all those three uh, three uh, indicators or parameters are very much important okay so like if we talk about transportation time so this is basically concerned with the real duration which we need uh, which we need to spend within the uh, transportation mode to complete our journey so for example the same uh, uh, the uh, the uh, geographical constraints such as uh, issues in weather fogs or any uh, technical limitation through which we we have we can reduce our speed so we have more time we actually needed to spend within our uh, within our uh, that specific mode okay so timing involves the uh, the usage uh, or the uh, are uh, directly related with the level of that flexibility okay through which we can select the any type of a network the next part is punctuality is you can see here. So that specific uh, graph is drawn between distance and time. So punctuality represents the ability to keep a specified schedule. For example, my class every day starts at 830. So which transportation mode I can take from home to to school or uh, education place where I can be there at 820. So can I rely on that mode? So it's again punctuality in terms of reliability. Frequency, which we also call the headway as well. Headway or frequency is uh, uh, kind of gave us basically the idea of of the going of one vehicle or train or bus or like BRT and coming off another one. So the number of departure for a specific of uh, for a specific time range. So if we have high number of frequency so better service uh, it will be but again we cannot provide always the high level of uh, services uh, because the empty run doesn't uh, doesn't benefit the uh, transportation system so we need to determine the the optimum level uh, which we can define for example in the peak hour uh, in the morning time or in the uh, afternoon whenever there is a time of, of the offices starting or the uh, offices closing or school universities closing so we can provide more uh, frequent vehicles or trains but in the middle day if we provide the uh, too many uh, vehicles so we will uh, end up in the losses okay which is not good for for the business uh, this is very much important we need to understand that how the uh, transportation or travel time is directly related with our capacity and volume okay and how the length travel time divided by vehicles are actually related so uh, this is uh, important to understand that uh, the function of a volume which is uh, actually carried through through any uh, specific transportation network which is related because of its uh, capacity in a simple word if a single link have a capacity of 200 uh, vehicles can pass in a single uh, two minute and uh, we have so many vehicles so 
uh, the overall journey of that specific uh, uh, travel will be higher. OK, so it's it's uh, very much important to understand in a simple word. We always concern about uh, about uh, the uh, the uh, circumstances such as cost or travel time. So the function of the volume period uh, uh, trying to carry it out to like that length. So if you draw a relation between travel time in volume uh, from that, we can uh, derive or highway performance or or transportation performance or, or road network performance as well. That is very much uh, important figure uh, trying to understand that what is the uh, importance of 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 those nodes which actually change your uh, pattern. OK, so links are typically guided are the kind of a guideways uh, in terms of highways, rail lines, etc. We have link through which we can take flows uh, typically of the vehicles or of the trains in any of the direction. So we describe transportation networks which are interconnected and those we determine it through different uh, connections or nodes point. So as you can see here in that top figure or picture, we have the physical facility of a two lens and three lens. You can imagine a scenario because of your built infrastructure. So sometimes we have the two lane and then uh, in some places the capacity of that specific network is increased to three. But in some places we have the three lanes and then again because of our built infrastructure or by providing some uh, electric poles or any physical facility or like bridges or culvert so the three lens is converting into two lens so those are the are the uh, kind of a nodes which actually change or uh, or driving behavior uh, driving volume travel time etc the second point is about that how we can represent the two lens section into the three lens okay so which we already mentioned in the top slides uh, this is your assignment, so each and every student must practice on those to determine the quality of networks or the interaction for each and every network. Thank you very much. If you people have any question, you can get back in the comment section. Thank you.